end draws near. at how good this volcano torch bomb type web set looks in the light. I mean, we took our best sellers and we torched them to add a little flare on the course for you. These bad boys come We took our best sellers and we torched them to add a little flare on the course. These bad boys Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Welcome back to the Cashers Round. Cashers Round this morning. We got Landon, Carnate, our leader. He's going to wrap a 10 pin. Austin Hutt, Clay Reese, Giorgio Slants, and Nick Bergaro. And these are all guys you know, that are. Pretty high up in the leaderboard. We'll give you a rundown real quick as I go ahead and pull up our standing sheet. While I do that, what I'm going to ask you guys, big favor, and I want to ask you folks, if you haven't already, share the video. Share it out there. Let your friends know. We got PBA action live right now. Landon Carney shot 300 last night in game eight of qualifying 
to extend his lead to over five, a 100 pins. So Landon has actually been tearing this pattern up as he cleans up his 10 pin. <coughs> so we took 18 from Pulling up who's in front of us. So, who's in front of us? Uh, we have 27, 28, 29, 30. We have Landon Carney, Austin Hunt, Giorgio. And then we have Clay Reese, Nick Bagaro, and Noah Gallegos. I know there was a couple Noah Gallegos fans out there yesterday. So, we'll have his first game with his cash around. We're bowling three games. Giorgio goes 10 straight back. That was a good looking ball. We took 18 yesterday. We're taking the top eight. Top eight to bowl three game matches, single elimination bracket. Clay leaves a seven pin. Uh, first, Landon Carney, who's in front of us, just throwing the ball right now, goes really high, trips the big four out. Uh, he went plus 350, averaging 243. Quarter. Giorgio is in second place, plus 256. Austin Hunt is in third place, plus 227. Clay Reese is in fourth at plus 223. Nick Noah Gallegos, fifth. Plus 219. No, Nick Bagaro, plus 214. Evan Nash, plus 203. Jamie Flynn, plus 185. And that's your top eight. We're taking eight. So currently the cut line is plus 185. Pins do carry over from yesterday. Giorgio crosses over. That's an oddity there. Man. Crosses over, but gets the break. They all fall. We are taking eight. Currently the cut line, plus 185. Tyler Norris is the first man out at plus 164. So you can throw a blanket over the next couple of guys here that are jockeying for this cut line. It's Tyler Norris, plus 164. Christopher Tolski, plus 152. Craig Tolski, 152. Tied. Dallas Burke, 134. Sean Hornberger, 134. Josh Shempe, 125. So throw a blanket on those guys. 40 sticks is easily added and lost to your score. Three games in this pattern. Tyler Cruz below them, plus 107. Zach Stone, plus 105. And Kendall Miles, 102. And Andy Kinney, plus 91. So that's where we sit. It's Austin Hunt goes 10 back. That's where we sit. We're going to be updating you with the scores you know, throughout the three games. Should be a little bit quicker than yesterday with a lot fewer bowlers. We do have the PBA 50 on the low end. Unfortunately, we just don't reach as far as they are. We only have three pairs for their uh, cashers round. We can also update you on their scores as well. Anybody interested, throw it down into the comments. I'll be watching the comments on YouTube. Facebook, not so much. So if you have questions, that's where you're going to want to post them. If you're in the, if you're in the Facebook chat, you're going to want to head on over. Click that link I pinned in the comments. In the comments. It's right there. Made it as easy I'll as possible for you. It helps YouTube, me a ton when you watch so on much. YouTube. So if you have questions, so. that's where you're going to want to post them. Please, the, please, please. Go ahead and do that Facebook for me. Facebook chat. You're going to want to head on over. Click that link I pinned in the comments. In the comments. There you go. Right there. Made it as easy Jeff, as possible for you. It helps me a ton when you watch on so YouTube. So if you have questions. Bowling really good, Noah. He's up right now. Only 29. Please, please. Go ahead and do that for me. Oh, yeah. Sends a messenger to spear the 10 pin off the deck. He starts with a three bag. Austin Hunt also with a three bag to start. He's going to extend that to four. Oh, yeah. No, no, I don't think Landon. Landon's on cruise control. He's going to bowl the eight. I don't think he loses 100 pins. Not, not a chance. He bowled, he's bowled too well. I think his ball roll is, is perfect. Absolutely perfect for this pattern. Giorgio. We'll cross oh, yeah. over no, again. No, I don't think Landon won't get so lucky this time and leave the three pins. I don't think he loses a hundred pins. Not, not a but yeah, I, I, Landon's ball, ball roll is just his ball roll perfect is, for this perfect. pattern. And a lot of axis rotation. For this pattern, Giorgio, will cross oh, yeah. over again. No, I Do I have double so lucky this time and leave the three pins? Is that better? Shout out to Robbie. He's a real one. Thanks for letting me know. The rest of y'all didn't even let me know. Big Spoiler dude. Didn't even, wasn't even aware. This is why I got you guys in the chat. Let me know what's going on. Anyway, yeah, I think Landon's 
ball roll is perfect for this pattern. Uh, it's got a lot of axis rotation, uh, so the ball doesn't read the front part of the lane nearly as much, um, which is good on long patterns because you need the ball uh, to not use up energy in the front part uh, as much as someone would with a lot of forward work. So, yeah, I think that's his, that was his key to success when he bowled so well. Giorgio, another guy. Uh, Giorgio has a lot of tilt, not a ton of axis rotation, but a lot of tilt, so that helps his ball get down the lane. They also go through the ball a little bit slower. So as the pattern breaks down and they're forced to move left, both Landon and Giorgio are able to get in and kind of slow hook it. That's not starting us off with a five bagger. Solid. No Gallegos on a three bagger to step up on lane 30 as well. An opportunity to extend out his string of strikes. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <clears throat> so Nick Magaro is looking at a 210. Landon leaves another 10 pin. Left a couple of those, would lean them up. Really just no disasters. As long as Landon doesn't really have a disaster, I don't think he'll be caught. Like, literally, Giorgio would have to shoot 700 to catch Landon, and that would be if Landon just shot six. I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't see him getting caught. Uh, the real the real tournament, in my opinion, um, you throw a blanket over third, because Giorgio's 30 sticks ahead of Austin, uh, and Austin... Clay Reese are four sticks away from each other, so there's like a really tight-knit race from third to seventh. And then you have to drop another 20 sticks down to Jamie Flynn at eighth, but eight, who eight to 14 is all very, very close. One bad game, one good game. Someone's right back into it. Giorgio leaving a split. His, his look seems to have deteriorated it a little bit. Chop. Chop the six pin off of that. The two, four, six, seven. Is that right? Two, four, six, seven. All right, so Landon's stepping up off a of spare. Austin Hunt has extended his strength strikes out to six for us. Landon will miss a little bit right. Well, 210. Noah Gallego's string has ended at four, leaving a seven pin. Fresh was great. It was feast or famish for our bowlers. Is he Barely tips that one. Yeah, it was either feast or famine for our bowlers. Um, guys who had a really good look on the fresh uh, struggled a little bit to adjust on the burn as they had to move in and slow down and hook the ball a little bit. And guys who, like Giorgio, kind of surged late. So did Landon. Landon wasn't necessarily leading after the first four games, but... Had a late surge as they broke down and the friction started to develop. Giorgio hates that shot for good reason. He does not look like he's bowling well. Yeah, he's frustrated. Uh, Nevin Nash railed the fresh and then uh, fell quite a bit. He was leading by close to 100 pins after like the first three and then kind of fell off a little bit as the pattern started to break down. Nick Bergaro goes light, trips a four pin out of the 248 hit. So I have a feeling you're going to see a little bit of a 
shift of those, those who could score on the fresh are going to have some success. And then as they start to develop some friction, which is about game one and a half with these guys. It's in about the halfway through the second game. So when they start to change, you need to make a zone move to get your ball through the pins as Landon gets a nice little break and trips the 2-4, leaving only the 10 pin. That's a good break. A lot of splits seen early. That free friction that was there, uh, the end of the qualifying block yesterday is no longer there to the right. Just a little bit, but not nearly as much as there was. Dawson Hunt with a seven bagger to start. Didn't get a 300 on the stream. Kind of 298 on stream, but we couldn't get there. Landon shot 300 in the final game of qualifying to extend his lead to 100 pins. He was already in the lead. He could have shot 200 and he was still been in the lead. Shoots 300 on his mom's birthday. Guy called him. Guys aren't friends or follow Landon. Uh, he posted on his social media that he brought his mom down to Boise for a tournament for her birthday. Uh, and it would be nice to shoot a 300. And he did. Called his shot. Called his shot. That's impressive. Steven, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can, I, I for sure think someone's going to shoot 750. For sure think someone's going to shoot 750. I don't think Landon's going to shoot 600. Is that's the thing? Like, I, I really don't think he's going to shoot 600. I think some of the people that need to shoot big scores probably will. There's going to be one or two guys down there that are going to jump quite a few people. Um, I don't think Landon will relinquish the lead. He's 100 pins from Georgia. So that means he's like 130 pins, 150 pins from the rest of the field. Georgia is probably going to lose a little bit of ground here. Starting off with an early three-bagger. And then lost his look. Was, uh, had a hard time hitting the pocket. Landon's ball, like he, he went, he started off pretty good. And then it's just, a little, it's just been a little light. Every ball is coming a little light, just right behind the head pin. Doesn't look like it's slowing down enough. No, if that's a surface issue, or a ball issue, or what? I like, I like the chat. Chat's blown up a little bit. It's nice. Do we remember that, Jeff? I did see you had front seven on the fresh. Yeah. Yeah, no match play points. Um, I, I think somebody's going to shoot. There's probably going to be two or three guys that shoot 750, at least. I think there's 150 pins will get caught up. Steve, uh, uh, Landon, I, I don't think he just shoots 600. I, I, I think he's going to shoot like 650, 680, and that's going to be more than enough to continue to hold the top spot. Uh, then at that point, it doesn't matter. Pins go away. And he's got to beat your guy in three games. See if Giorgio can do so. The ball's left off his hand. Like, he, he just has zero look. I, he looks totally lost. Throw the ball terribly. Georgia's never been a good morning bowler, to be honest with you. Seen him bowl quite a few tournaments at this point. He's never really bowled well early. As a ball change from Landon, and that ball goes 10 straight back. So, good ball change from him. He can have a solid game. He can have a solid game. At this point, I think par is going to be like 210, 220. Ah, Steven, his max score. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, the strike there in the ninth. You have 195 in the ninth if he punches in the 10th. Uh, 05, 25, or 25. Yeah, you said 25. Florida would be right the first time because he's got 65 in the eighth. So you'd have 195 in the ninth and then 30 pins to that. 
No, not 215 either. Not 215. Should have stuck with your guns, my guy. Should have stuck with your guns. <laughs> Don't go back to sleep. If you go back to sleep, at least keep it on. Oh, Georgia gets a lucky break kicking the 10 pin out of that. This is just about as bad as it gets as Austin Hunt comes up very high and leaves a 3 6 9 10 and ends his streak at 8. Well, Gallegos, though, having a really good game. He's going to make up some pins. And he will not convert a 3 6 9 10. Well, that's unfortunate. 234, max 264 after having the front eight. Good game, but you got to disappoint. Got to be a little bit disappointing leaving some 10, 20 pins out there with that open. Yeah, I mean, I practice. They were, you know, throwing stuff up the right side, and trying to create some of that friction to the right. Nick gets a nice break there on a double. Nick really needed that hit, though. He's not going to have a solid game with a couple opens there. Landon, yeah, great ball change. The ball looks much better. It's getting back on a, on a bad ball there. Uh, it still gets back in the pocket enough to strike. Uh, whatever ball he was using before did not look nearly, nearly as good as that one does right now. He's throwing good balls and leaving. Two tens. Oh, and then the Austin two four eight tens. Wow, this is disastrous. Oh, he's gonna shoot two. Uh, he's got two forty right now. He's gonna shoot two forty three. Oh man, go front eight and only get two forty three out of it. Fortunately, you know Austin's in third and uh, pretty high up on the cut line. He's not hurting for pins. You know, it's always. Sucks to leave some out there, but he's not necessarily hurting for pins. You know, but 30, uh, that's quite a few pins he just left out on the, on the deck there. Ouch. So Landon with a good fill here. He'll shoot 220. Solid game for him to start out with when he only really needed to you know, shoot 220 out. He's not, he's going to maintain his lead. Yeah, that ball looks so much better. That's a very good ball change. Surprised he didn't make it early. I guess he had a little bit of a look to start out the game and just went away really quick. Just all of a sudden disappeared. So, good for Landon. He's going to maintain his lead. Who are we going to have next? Who are we going to have next in game number two? We are going to have Tyler Crew, Zach Stone, Kendall Miles, and Andy Kenny. Those are going to be the three, uh, the four bowlers as Giorgio, I mean, finally throws something that looks halfway decent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's significant, especially when you only have three games. You know, there's not a ton of games. I, I mean, I'm sure he's not too frustrated, and it sucks. You gotta kind of get over it pretty quick because he's not really yearning for pins. Just trying to bowl someone that was a lower seed. But even the lower seed bowlers today are going to be pretty dang good. Yeah, but whatever Landon saw there, that ball change has helped him tremendously. Giorgio's made a big move left. And that's not a good ball, and it still hit the right side of the head pin. So, uh, not really sure what Giorgio saw early there. He's going to shoot 190. And luckily, if Giorgio's got a little bit of a lead. Austin Hunt probably will leapfrog him. Yeah, he will. So Giorgio's going to fall two or three spots with a very mediocre game to start. Taking that bet, Jeff. Is that right? He's got a good game. He's going to shoot. shoot 270. Game one, Noah does. I mean, that's going to jump him up quite a bit, isn't it? 
plus 219, add 76 to that. I mean, yeah, I'll go to plus 290. Yeah, plus 294. He's going to jump Giorgio. Uh, Austin got. It's going to be 290 as well. So he's jump Austin. I don't know what Clay shot. Yeah, he's going to. Austin, or Noah's going to jump to second place. No one's going to jump to to second place. It's a very, very good game for Noah. Shooting 275 on the fresh. Hopefully, though, like I said, last night or yesterday, guys who were really successful on the fresh struggled a bit on the burn. Now, we're not going to have as much a burn as we did yesterday because we're jumping pairs. We're going to just continue to move left, um, use, uh, utilizing 23, 24, 25, 26 um, for match play for the bracket but yeah I mean it's not going to break down as much so the guys who had had it on the fresh are going to have it a little bit longer today than they had yesterday than they had yesterday sweet well while we're waiting uh, for Zach Stone Tyler, uh, Tyler Cruz Kendall Miles and who else was it Kendall Miles and Andy Kenny local guy uh, just want to take a time out to thank a couple of our sponsors folks of you in the chat Drake Mechanical for the, being the title sponsor of this tournament and Skids Mobile Tire Service helping me out directly bring this stream to you if it weren't for them it simply would not be possible so if you guys are in the northern Utah area uh, you know Farmington-ish anywhere north like Brigham to Salt Lake anywhere in that area uh, my guy Nanny at Skids Mobile tire service. I got a one ton Duramax. He did my tires really easy. Just came out to my work, ordered the tires for me, put them on. All before lunch. So, he does a really good job. They've got a deal running. So, if you contact them, I've got that post on my Facebook. I've got their little card and their offer. If you head on over to Championship Bowling's Facebook page, you can see that. You get $25 off your first order if you mention the PBA. So, please go help out the people that help me. So they will continue to help me bring these awesome events for you guys to enjoy. Bowley D, there you go. It's a little bit better. Did he? Yeah, I mean, those two handers, those two handers are pretty uh, versatile, especially in the, at the highest level. The guys that, you know, really change their axis rotations, especially with the two handers, it's much, much easier. Um, usually, you're, you're able to play a little bit straighter. And, Get in, slow down, hook it. Yeah, Robbie, you should have. You should have. I should have let you know. I should have told you about it. You come out and just did it. I even had a have an emergency. Anyway, for those of you in the Facebook chats, because I know there's a couple of you, quite a few of you out there in Facebook land. Like, what you're gonna want to do is head on over, click that link that I. Uh, post it, pinned, pin the comment put a link to the YouTube channel, head on over there that's where your help uh, really helps me is your views on, on YouTube, uh, you get a little kickback from YouTube and uh, when you watch from YouTube, I don't get anything from Facebook but I do get stuff from YouTube, there's a little over 30 of you in the chat and I only have 3 likes too, that helps a ton all the things, all the things you can do helps a ton I appreciate it Appreciate the chat. Blowing up. That helps us a lot. Looks like we're just finishing a game here. On 31 and 32. Looks like the final shot was just thrown, so getting the guys moving around. Pace is just a tiny bit slower as guys are getting a little bit stacked up. Kendall Miles a little bit behind. A little bit behind. Needs to have a good game, good set. Uh, Kendall and I talked last night. And, uh, I think that he, in his head, is feeling he needs to shoot like 750 to have a chance. He, he left a lot of pins out there. He's a little bit frustrated. Left a lot of pins out there. Uh, I think he's got it. He had his best look was on the fresh. Uh, as Tyler Cruz mixes one up. Post 10 to the pit. Um, yeah, I, I think he's got a chance if he can really lock in his focus. Uh, 
definitely can go out and shoot 750, 800. Uh, I don't know. They, their, their skips were kind of random yesterday, Bully. So, I mean, going off of the first seed guys, is Zach Stone gets one. First place guys went 27, 28, 31, 32, and then 37, 38. So their their skips, uh, skip one, skip two. Is that right? Yeah, I think skip one, skip two. We love to see it, Jeff. Love to see you out here, my friend. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Trying to grow the regional tour. That's where it begins. Success out here gets you on to the big tour. Especially when you can compete against some of the touring guys that come out. I believe we're going to have a few of them when we go to the Beehive Open. Well, later this month, we'll be bringing that to you live. Ooh, Zach Stone mixes another one out. Waiting on scoring update. Josh should be putting him in here momentarily. Let's see what he does. Andy Kinney, as Kendall starts out with a strike, Andy Kinney goes to the face and leaves a 4 6 7. Cruz leaves a 2 8. You can see Giorgio just off camera there. Oh, wow. He got really lucky there, crumbling the bucket on 31. Andy Kinney at his split. Will not convert. Will not convert. Zach Stone now leaves a four pin off his double. So both of those streaks have ended. Kendall Miles is going to step up. And he's done on the right lane on 30. Yeah, Zach Stone's been bowling pretty good. So a good comeback there for Andy after missing pretty badly. In the first frame, Andy's got quite a bit of room that he needs to catch up on. To get himself in the cut line, do have an updated score. We do have updated scoring for the PBA guys. Kendall goes to the face and leaves a 310. Ouch. So, oh, Kendall had a disaster first game. Ouch. Ouch. All right, well, <clears throat> Landon uh, has his lead chipped into a little bit, no longer leads by 100. He's a plus 375. Noah Gallegos does shoot himself up to second to plus 294. Austin Hunt, plus 270. Giorgio slips down to fourth place at 255. Clay Reese, uh, nine pins behind Giorgio, plus 246. Evan Nash at plus 231 is Kendall. A good spare there. Kendall's going to have to shoot. I don't know if he can make it anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately, he just doesn't have the look. Lanes are playing much different down here on the very high end than they were in the middle and the low end. Um, where were we? Clay. Evan Nash, plus 231. Nick Pagaro with a little bit of a drop-off from Evan Nash to Nick Pagaro, plus 194. Tyler Norris has slipped himself into the cut line now, plus 182. 
192, excuse me, but that's only one pin ahead of Christopher Tolski. Plus 191. Christopher Tolski's your ninth place. Round out the top 10, Jimmy Flynn at plus 172. So taking a little bit of step down. Again, it was a little bit frustrated. Needed the big game. Didn't get the start he was looking for. Uh, Glenn was plus 100 and went plus 59. So he was shot like 160. Ouch. Man, that hurts. So did Andy. And they were on the end pairs, and I don't know. Those pairs must be real bad. That's surprising they shot such poor games. And he can't get the four pin to mix. So... The rest of the, t the field, you have to take a, like a 30-pin step down to Craig, Craig Tolsky um, after Jaden, who's in 10th place. So 11th place is Craig Tolsky at plus 148. Dallas Burke, 146. Zach Stone, 140. And then there's a significant line there. So I think 14th on down, really at this point, which is Sean Hornberger, Josh MP, Tyler Cruz, Kendall Miles, Andy Kinney. You don't really have a chance anymore. Because you go from plus 140 to plus 79. Plus 79 for Sean Hornberger. 77 for Josh. 70 for Tyler. 59 for Kendall. 56 for Andy. So, Zach Stone's really the last man I think that has a chance. He's only 50 out. Definitely can make those pins up with a solid game here, which it looks like he may have with a strike here in the fifth frame. Ah, six pin just bouncing around in the gutter. Can't get it quite high enough to check out the 10 pin. So he's going to have to figure out how to get that corner out uh, if he wants to have a chance. But yeah, after after Zach Stone, there's a significant step down to the rest of the field. And I don't know at this point, I think they have a chance in two games to get to a point where they can make the cut. I think how different the pairs way up here are playing from, you know, where some of those guys that started uh, is playing into account uh, uh, effect on what's happening, why they're not scoring. But they're, wow, he didn't have so much of a, a gap, and all of a sudden that gap is massive, 14 on down. So those five bowlers are, uh, I, I, I think they're locked out at this point. I don't think they really have much of a chance unless there's something catastrophic happening at the top, but... These kind of bowlers don't really have those issues. Kendall goes 10 back there. Got the Cruz, also one of those guys in the bottom 14. Andy Kenny's also one of those guys. So everyone except Zach Stone really does no chance at this point of being so far behind with two games to go. So my number one pick doesn't look like it's going to work out. But but if you guys do follow me on Facebook, follow the Championship Bowling on Facebook, we put out our power rankings. I was 9 for 10 on guys that I chose that made the cut. 9 for 10. I'm pretty proud of myself. That's pretty solid. There's a couple guys I got cooked for for snubbing them. I even called the Tyler Norris. I said, if you're going to watch these three guys, Jamie Flint. Did I call Jamie Flint too? The lefty? Yeah, dude, I got two of the long shots, and Richard almost made it. I called those two long shots. I said, Richard, Leon, Jamie Flynn, and Tyler Norris. Tyler Norris has a good chance at making the round of eight in his first PBA event. How awesome is that? And I called it. I would have definitely said, that's who, uh, if you want to put some money on someone, it would be him. It's a nice long shot. Give you a lot of good payout if he can manage to dig deep and get a win here. Zach Stone working on a strike. There's a good ball there for him. You're going to need a lot of those. Make up some of the ground between him and the cut line. As you know, those guys are going to continue to bowl well. Especially as this pattern develops. My fear, though, is guys that didn't necessarily bowl well yesterday on the fresh didn't, didn't really take the time to break them down properly uh, to where they have that advantage on the burn. Uh, so that we may see a little bit. Of, this may get a little ugly. May not score quite as high as it did yesterday. We'll see, though.
All right, let's see what Kendall's got here. Ten back there. Looks like he made a little bit of a ball change. He was throwing reality before. This looks like RSTX1. Yeah, Zach locked in yesterday. He was he had kind of fallen off a little bit. He was bowling really well. And then had fallen off a little bit. Uh, and then you could really see he dug deep. And found something late. And uh, got himself in a position that he could score on. We have a scoring update on the PBA 50. For all of those of you interested, unfortunately I can't quite get it. It's Kyle, Kendall Miles now doubles. Can't quite get them on camera, but... What I can tell you uh, is there's been a little bit of a shakeup. Bob Rosnow still leads by close to 100. Robert Brown at plus one. So Bob Rosnow plus 215. Robert Brown plus 135 is Zach Stone. Seven pins. Letting out some of that frustration, knowing that he really could have used that strike in the ninth frame. That was a big ball. Tony Rodriguez at plus 89. John Burkett plus 71. Steve Klumpkin plus 66. Gary Morgan plus 49, Jeff Conradi 43, Russ Hunt 43. Then you take about a 30 stick step down to Steve Sherman at 18, Greg Thomas at 11, Jason Dosharm 2 plus 2, and Ty Dawson at minus 37. So for those fans of the PBA 50 regional tour, that's where your uh, top third sits. They're taking eight as well. Oh, Andy with the hard way. Throws the head pin off the apron in the back. Jumps up and takes the 10 out. <coughs> Picks the 1 2 10. Not a split, though. Not a split, though. For your bowling nerds out there, that is a washout. Not a split. Zach could really use 30 pins here in the in the 10th frame. Get that extra 10 on the spare. Fortunately, that 7 pin in the ninth kind of hurt him. Took a look, a couple pins away from him. Oh, and a flat 10, so he's not even, he's going to get 20. Ouch. That's unfortunate. That's a pretty solid ball. And he could have really used all those pins. Ah, that sucks for Zach. He needs them, too. Ty Cruz trips to 4-9. I know there's a couple people that were just seeing him. Apparently, he's a former Junior Team USA member. Struggling early here, though. This game will be a little bit better for him, but game one was not too kind to my man, Tyler Cruz. So Zach will pick it and can max now. At 227. Uh, I'm going to kind of need a little bit more than that. Needs to make up 50 sticks, so he needs some people to come back down to him. There's another strike there, so yeah, Tyler's going to have a solid game. Unfortunately, I mean, he would have to have two monster ones to even have come close at this point with how far back he is. Being over 120 pins out. Kendall starts stringing him now. That's a four-bagger for Kendall there on lane 30. Zach Stone still can't get 10 back. It was nine spare, nine spare, nine on good balls. So I don't know if that's a, a ball change or what because those balls look pretty good back here. And Kenny's going to have a solid game too. the strike here. He gets it. Swisher. All right, folks. Well, I'm going to take a quick break. Leaders doing. Um, can't see land. I can't see land right here. Just uh, landing's doing fine. Uh, gonna shoot a 220. It looks like Stephen Noah. Let me go look. I'll go look and let you know. I'll be right back.
All right. Steven. So, uh, Landon can punch for 225. Austin can punch for 247. And Giorgio can punch for 248 right now. They're in the ninth frame. So I'm going to take a quick break right now. Unless this game wraps up, we'll get a scoring update after two. We'll lock in for the third game so you can get into the cup.
All right, your boy's back. We're starting game three, and we do have a scoring update after. Lion Carnate still has not lost his lead. He leads plus 378. Austin Hunt second, plus 316. Noah Gallegos has jumped to third, plus 27. Clay Reese, plus 268. Christopher Otolski, who's in front of us, 2930. Plus 268, also. Giorgio, plus 248. Nick Bagaro. Plus 238. Jamie Flynn, plus 230. One game to go. <coughs> Evan Nash is plus 209. He's in the ninth place, so he's got to make up a couple sticks on Jamie Flynn. Dallas Burke, plus 203. Tyler Norris, plus 198. So, guys need big games. We go split, split. Start here on 27 28. There's Jamie Flynn, Tyler Norris, and. Oh, man, we got all three. All three of them. Jamie Flynn, Evan Nash, Tyler Norris. So we just don't have Dallas Burke. So that's all we're missing right now. That is all we are missing. Craig Tolsky, who's in front of us. Uh, he's plus 159, so he would need to make up a lot of sticks. And the Norse chops a split, so. Jamie Flynn is competing against directly Evan Nash, Dallas Burke, Tyler Norris. Zach Stone's plus 166, so he has about, oh man, 70 pins almost to make up. I can see it. Crazy things have happened. Uh, I think more realistically, Evan Nash, Dallas Burke, and Tyler Norris have a shot with good games. If Jamie Flynn does not have a good game, but Jamie Flynn's going to go ahead and shake one out, it's going to be hard to beat a lefty in the crunch time. It is going to be really hard to beat a lefty in the crunch time. They just have so much more room. Before you go off, on, this isn't really a, like a lefty-righty thing. This is a more uh, Westy's Garden Lanes is a lefty house. It's got a lot of room topography on it, not just that. Dallas Burke is right there as well, so we do have Dallas Burke, who also has a shot. We have the we have the eight, nine, ten, eleven seats right here in front of us. Wow, this is cool. Very cool. Tyler Norris almost 7 tens, leads only the seven pin, or ten pin. Seven pin falls late. Gonna need a strike. Gonna find a way to kick that corner out.
Dallas Burke picks up a split. Shot there. In my bag. In that one that says. Jamie Flynn opens the door up. On the BBA 50 side, we got two 300s going. So I'm going to go check that out. We'll play. I'll be right back.
Appreciate your patience, folks. Two or three hundred paces. Steve Klemkin. Robbie, uh, the seniors are um, like four pairs left of where my second camera is, so I, I just can't use it right now. The round of eight will be able to use it, I believe. We'll have a second camera here soon, but it's down on the senior end. Uh, Steve Klemkin. 300 pace, left and eight, or 28 in the first ball of the 10th. There's also 300 pace, there's 289. Strike, and then a seven pin, I believe. So I had to go over there and take a look at that, so I appreciate your patience. Jamie Flynn bowling a good enough game right now to keep himself away from at least Evan Nash, Tyler Norris. It looks like Dallas Burke could have a good run here if he punches out. Dallasburg is in 10th, 27 sticks from um, hey, Jamie Flynn. Wow, I completely forgot. Nick Bargaro in some ways down there. He's only eight sticks in the good. So a bad game from him can drop him down. But I do this look like Dallas Burks having a solid game. That could get him in. Depending on what Jamie Flynn does here. Jamie Shaker needed it. Good shot there. And Tyler Morris whiffs a, whiffs a 10 pin. Ouch. All right, Dallas Burke on a string of strikes. This one here could be pretty big. I mean, I think if he gets them all, he's in. Unless, unless uh, Jamie Flynn finds a way to start stringing some of his own. But he, Dallas Burke looking over if he knows what the score is. Got to be known. Thinking that I got to punch out. Got to put some pressure on Jamie to perform. Dallas Burke in his eighth frame. Working on three strikes. Ooh, there's another one. That's a good ball. Wow. All right. So we got some drama. Some drama unfolding in front of us. They have played much, much different than they did yesterday. I mean, Evan Nash rolled him over yesterday, and he's going to find himself hard-pressed to, hard to make the cut. Yeah, I don't think he's going to make the cut. That's pretty insane. He tore him up on the fresh, and they are not playing anything like they did yesterday. The guys who had good looks on the fresh do not have good looks now. The guys that kind of bowled well yesterday, Clay, Giorgio, Landon, Austin Hunt. Chris Tolsky has put himself in a position to make the cut. Nick Pagaro's fallen a little bit. Jamie Flynn's put himself, but you know, Evan Nash, uh, Kendall Miles had a good set, a good couple games early. Um, all struggling. All struggling. Ooh, Alice Burke gets another one. That one was huge. The ninth frame is huge. So now, a first and the tenth. And at that point, he's got a lot of pressure on Jamie to perform. Jamie. 28. Yep, he gets it. Around can't seem to strike, but can't really find the pocket. 
Guy couldn't miss first two games yesterday, and now struggling to even find a look. It's Christopher Tolsky. Barry's another one. He can shoot 238, 233. Norris, very high for him. It's a good run for Tyler. Just uh, lost a little steam there at the end. Shout out to him, though, for his first PBA event, making the cut. He's been a lot of work to get to this point. So very impressive to get a check in his very first PBA event. Christopher Tulsi gets another one. So, yeah, he's going to shoot 220, 230. Dallas Burke needs them all because Jamie Flynn's feeling it. See, Jamie, look, he's looking right at him. He's looking right over there. He wants to know what's happening. He wants to see it. Dallas Burke. Big strike here. This one's big. Yeah, he got it. So Jamie just saw that. Just saw that. He's got to feel the pressure now. He's got to know that Dallas Burke is close. And the ball's left off his hand. Needs it to hook. It doesn't miss the head pin left whiffs the head pin. You gotta wonder if that, like the pressure's getting to me. I mean, he's peeking over there. You can see him knowing that Dallas is right on his heels and is stringing strikes. You're gonna throw a big game. Let's shoot 260. If he punch a strike here, it shoots 260. With a split conversion in the fourth, I mean, that's that's big. That's, tw that's 10 pins. That could be enough. Dallas Berg. He's going to get himself to the cup with a big game here, I think. I think this will be enough. Yep. So he's going to shoot 260. Dip the cap to Dallas Berg. Jamie Flynn absolutely has to have the flare, spare here. He does. So Jamie Flynn really, to have any chance of staying where he's at, is going to need to punch. And you, yeah, he's, you can see the frustration. I wonder if he knows just how close it really is with Dallas Berg shooting 260. Neither, neither, Stephen uh, attempted. I don't remember who the first gentleman was, but he shot 289 with strike nine, spare, and then Steve Klempian had the front nine and left the two weight in the first ball in the tenth. Dallas Burke and his fill, good enough, great game. He's not sure if that's good enough. I'm looking back and I'm thinking it is. Ah, Tyler Norris through the face, Greek Church. I, I'm thinking that's going to be good. What? What? What do we see? Jamie Flynn can max. He's got 134 with a strike here. I'd like to see a strike here. Oh, he missed it left again and misses the head pin right. Oh, no. That's disaster. That is absolute disaster. So, let's see what... If he can, I don't know if he can even. I, I, he really is given this to, to Dallas. That's two balls in a row that he has missed the head pin left. Wow. Unfortunate for Jamie. This long pattern really equilibriated the lefty advantage here in this house. It's taking away all that free friction they had left. As you can see, Jamie just whiffs the head pin. Two balls in a row to the left. And he will not convert the spare catastrophic he can now shoot 199 and will be beat by 53 pins if he punches that will drop Jamie Flynn out and Dallas Burke in Dallas Burke will also is only now six sticks to to Evan Nash, who he'll also beat. So Dallas Burke will jump both Evan Nash and Jamie Flynn to get himself into the cut. Wow, what a performance. I'm not sure if he's quite aware of exactly the situation, but that 260 is massive. That is going to be enough to get Dallas Burke in the cut.
Bowling's hard, folks. It's hard. Not only a physical game, but a mental one. And when we're talking about a game of inches, halves of inches, quarters of inches, our mental game is not 100% there. I mean, those turn into I mean, minuscule targets that are impossible to hit. Had to think Dallas Bowling right next to him, throwing all those strings and strikes, had to affect Jamie at some point. Because as soon as, as soon as he saw Jamie nail the one of the night, uh, or Dallas nail the one of the night, Jamie missed the head pin left and then missed it again as Dallas struck for the first time the tenth. Shout out to Lori for watching. Impressive. Not a whole lot of updated scoring, so it's hard to 100% tell. I'm just going off of what I can see. Yeah. Massive 260 for Dallas. In the clutch. And he needed it. Right next to James. Like, I mean, could you set that up any better? Put that pressure on the guy you're bowling. He's watching. Wow. Well, I mean, that was a drama-filled third game. I don't know what Nick Magaro ended up shooting. We'll see that here soon. But, yeah, Jamie Flynn's going to get jumped by Dallas Burke. <clears throat> um, Evan Nash shoots 190. Not good enough. In impressive. Very impressive. It really depends on what Nick Giorgio shots. I think Chris is a little too far away. He's 20 pins ahead of Giorgio. Dallas was 203. That's 66 to that. That's... Plus 269. So Georgia would have, he could have, I don't, Christopher bowled a good game. So I don't think he jumped Christopher. He could jump potentially Giorgio depending on what he shot. So Dallas is going to jump two spots probably on a huge game in the final game. All right, well, we're just going to wait for scores and we'll move on to the round of eight for both BBA 50 and BBA. So I'm going to take another quick break. Once we get scores, I'll let you know where we're at. And we'll get buckled down for three game matches. Single elimination, round of eight.
All right. We have official scores in. Official scores. Whoa. What's happening? There we go. All right. Now I got that. Now I got the screen for you guys. Sorry. Here we go. <clears throat> Officially, this is the cut. Cuts 261. Zach Stone misses by like 40. So it wasn't necessarily that close. Dallas Burke does make it in. <laughs> so does Noah Gallegos. So we have Landon leads by 70 plus 373. Austin Hunt gets to plus 308. Christopher Tolsky plus 301. Clay Reese plus 287. George Osland 269. Dallas Burke 269. Noah 263. And Nick Pagaro, 261. So, Dallas Burke, the story of that last game, shooting 260 to jump himself from 10th to 6th and get himself into the cut and a chance to win this tournament. Local guy here from Nampa, Idaho. Uh, he is the last Idahoan in. Oh, no, no, no. I guess Nick Pagaro's Coeur d'Alene. Not necessarily local here to Boise, the Boise area, but from Coeur d'Alene. So, two Idahoans in the finals for this match. So, we're going to finish the senior side up. We're going to finish the senior side up. We'll have official announcements. We want to check back on championship bowling. If you go to our Facebook page, follow it. You'll get news updates. Um, we're going to start another live video for the finals. So I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to end this stream. We're going to adjust a few things, and then we'll be right back for... The round of eight for both the PBA senior, PBA 50 senior, PBA 50 and PBA events. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow us on Championship Bowling if you want. News updates will be posting what the cut score for the PBA 50 was as well, as well as this cut score. And Garnet still leads. He'll be your number one seed. Thanks, folks.